Hello, Body Messiah. We're back and we're going to kind of deviate from the, uh, just temporarily for this lesson from the Lawless Fallen Angel series. After this lesson, we're going to return back to it. Um, but we wanted to take some time to, uh, after this, another election cycle has passed and the dust has settled, to go over um, another lesson. We had one with the same title, similar to this, four years ago. But this lesson is called Messiah's Body. Is God really in it? And we put 2024 election. On the previous one, we're going to go back and alter the title and add 2020 election. Okay. In the previous lesson, we addressed Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15 through 20, and 1 Samuel chapter 8. The reason why we cover these is because we're trying to make sure that the body of Messiah makes sure that they keep their focus. No matter if you chose to um, participate in the election by voting or not. Okay. Um, there's this mentality within the body of Messiah and out where people feel like um, voting is a do or die situation in order to alter the whole fate of the entire nation. Um, but we're going to show you once again, how our most high God has this nation of America in a particular place or state as far as the prophetic word goes. And it doesn't matter which candidate is chosen to put to go in that position. Yes, it's true that some people feel like the judgment is going to be less harsh um, as far as the nation of America goes, depending on the heart of the people. And that's true. But the heart of the people, as far as the voting goes and the candidate that they choose, really is not going to alter God's word. It's not going to alter his standard. And it's definitely not going to alter or change completely his judgment. Right? Um. We're showing here that God's original plan for the actual descendants of Israel in Deuteronomy 17, 15 through 20, verses 15 through 20, he stated to the children of Israel, I will pick your leader for you. Okay. This was a part of Adonai's original plan. Later on, man, uh, the children of Israel begged to have a king and a leader like the other nation. So this is where you enter into looking at scriptures from 1 Samuel chapter 8, right? And God goes through detail describing to the children of Israel, if you choose to go this route, since you are, are so determined to, I'll allow you to have a king, but he will have the best of all that you have, right? He gets to pick the best of everything. This was not a part of Adonai's original plan. But even when you see in this uh, uh, chapter of 1 Samuel, God placed restrictions on the kings to not to be overly indulging in riches and, and, and all of the delicacies and things like that from the people. He had restrictions on them so that they wouldn't get a huge big head. They had to understand they were submissive to the Most High God, okay? And they were to serve the people. Now, what you'll notice uh, for the United States, there are two groups that they show that really every year, Every time there's an election that most of the political opponents fall into. I don't care if you're Green Party, Tea Party, uh, uh, Independent, Libertarian, whatever. You're going to fall in a liberal group for a liberal group or a conservative group. But you'll find because of the structure of the B system and governments that have been established, they all serve one and the same purpose. And a part of the purpose that has been ingrained in these government systems, not just in the U.S., mind you, but throughout the world, is number one, they usually go adversely against the children of Israel who are scattered throughout the world. They're descendants of Africans and African slaves, okay? And then number two, they also go against God's standards that he has put in place, okay? Okay? For the most part, this is what happened in all political group because you have in the government system a B system that's going on in the background, 
right? Trying to attain its purpose and its goal. So we're going to go over some of the attributes that, uh, some of the examples of how they're one and the same and that they're similar. So they may vary just a little bit. Um, one of the main issues I'll point out that they claim that liberal varies and differs from conservative is um, liberals are for abortion rights. But I also had to point out on this side, on the conservative side, that they're seeking to punish women who partake in an abortion, right? And this is a huge grounds for hypocrisy for this conservative group. I've shared with y'all a couple of times that when I looked at the statistics for the CDC, the majority of the abortions that take place occur amongst this group, okay? And to state that you will punish the woman and not the man because it takes two people to create a baby uh, reminds me of the scribes and the Pharisees when it came to Mary, Mary Magdalene and when she was about to be stoned. Okay, God is displeased with both. Okay, so let's just be clear on that. When you persecute one side and not address the man and the woman as a unit, that's a problem. All right, so both groups say they're for the average person. Both groups, as we see, support gun rights. Uh, this group is saying they want to have stricter laws. This group is saying they don't. You see here, as far as children are concerned, both have scenarios under their particular clauses or, or what they believe in that is very harmful to children. So I'm just pulling out one point here. And, you know, when you see the point that I'm drawing, you will understand clearly because these two things equally can harm children. Number over here on this side, on the liberal side, they usually support children deciding their gender. That's what usually their agenda includes. But this is very dangerous and detrimental to a child's health. A child is too young to understand and make a decision, a lifelong decision to alter their body structure or their biological design. Okay. They're too young. They have no understanding and should not be exposed to the point of, of engaging in something that's associated with something sexual to where they are allowed to make a decision about their entire gender. It's life altering. That's dangerous. Okay. And you'll notice that statistics show at least like 95 or 98 percent who made that decision as a teenager regret it when they're in their 30s and 40s. Okay. So much so it, it gives them huge depression, de depression issues. Here we see on the conservative side, they overwhelmingly support children being tried as adults, right? And we're not just talking about 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 15-year-old. We're talking about 10-year-olds, especially when they're black children, okay? Tried as adults in the court and being sentenced in jail for life. And that's a problem, all right? Children who fully don't have their mind developed yet should not uh, be cast away. Um, and when we see the, the judicial system, uh, the, the incarceration system is extremely biased against black children. As we know, this particular candidate uh, that's about to enter office, he supported uh, uh, the death, the Central Park Five being put to death, and they were teenage children. Even after they were found to be innocent, he still said they should be put to death. And nobody in this group, conservative group, had an issue with um, calling this representative out for that. You'll see on both the liberal and conservative side, they're supposed to have a problem with immigration being uh, getting out of hand. But I'm showing that they're saying that the liberal side is friendlier to the immigrant population and conservative is harder. But one thing I want to draw on both sides that's extremely hypocritical is they only talk about immigration when it concerns black and brown people, right? So this is extremely hypocritical. If you have a problem with immigration and legal or illegal immigration, 
it should address all groups. You seeing where they only address it when it comes to Haitian immigrants or those coming across the border from Mexico, right? But they never address immigration when it comes to European immigrants, British, uh, those from Portugal, Spain, Greece, Rome, uh, any of those areas. Automatically, I think British uh, uh, immigrants are given citizenship as far as I understand. Maybe I'm wrong, but correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But they never address that as being an issue. I've seen a huge volume of Ukrainian uh, immigrants from Ukraine being imported immediately over here and given citizenship and given money to have them a home. Um, and also Russian immigrants. I never hear them speak negatively about them. So only in the case of black and brown immigrants is there an issue. And that's hypocrisy on both sides. All right. You'll see here where it came to the uh, January uh, 6th attempt to overthrow or change the election. The liberal side will not openly pardon uh, individuals who are involved in that. But we know in the background that some courts, you know, have basically disregarded or given less harsh sentences to the people who partook in that. And then, but here on this conservative side, they plan to, um, with this particular president entering an offense, to openly pardon those who partook in that, right? And like I say, hypocrisy on both sides is going on. And here's where we get into where God stands, okay? And where God will have an issue. On both, this is where both sides are, are found being in detriment of causing more judgment to fall on this nation. Both sides receive massive political contribution from the wealthy institutions and individuals. So each group of government is supposed to serve the people, but you find throughout history and especially now, that they only cater to the objectives that the wealthy institution or individuals seek and desire to fulfill. That's a problem. You'll see on the liberal side, Bill Gates gave millions of dollars to Kamala's Harris, uh, Kamala Harris uh, campaign and Elon Musk to Trump's campaign and to individual people who, who voted on the conservative side. You'll see here support uh, that the U.S., no matter which group, overwhelmingly support the United Nations defined Israel, but not the actual ancient descendants of Israel. This is a huge problem when it comes to biblical prophecy, guys. And so when you want to know where God stands, the judgment that's falling on America and other nations has weighs heavily with these last two that we have here, Okay. We as a people in the body of Messiah need to be extremely clear of who the actual descendants of Israel are because it plays so detrimental to when it comes to God's prophetic words being fulfilled. So we will not fall into this strange, strong delusion. Okay. And that also goes for the government. But those at the higher levels, as we've mentioned before, know what they're doing. Okay. You'll see here this last one that both. Uh, partake in that's displeasing to God, both ignores the poor and the needy within America, right? You'll rarely hear any group, political group, speak on what they will do to help those who are the poorest in our country and the most needy in our country, right? In America. They're so busy shelving, shelv shelving out millions and billions of dollars to support war in other nations. So the war in U between Ukraine and Russia, um, the war that was occurring in Afghanistan, uh, the war that's occurring uh, in the United Nations defined Israel against the Palestinian people, you know, that's causing their ultimate destruction, right? They shove billions and billions of dollars to entities that have nothing to do with supporting the poor, needy, and fatherless within America, but they always have the money to go towards the poor. All right. And also the fact that God gave the prophetic word to Jacob, the descendants of Israel, 
I will plunder those who plunder you. So not only America, but all nations that involve the plundering and enslavement and captivity and building their wealth off of the descendants of African Af Africans and African slaves who are the actual children of Israel that comes in heavily to play in the latter days when God's prophetic words is being fulfilled. So here to remind you where God stands, we are going to refer back to some of the old lessons that we have here back from maybe like three to four years ago. So you can go back and review, right? So we need to understand where God stands. He's the creator of the universe. He rules over all and he will build up kingdoms and tear them down. So understand as far as this last election cycle goes, America is in a certain phase when it comes to a prophetic word and prophecy. And if you go back and look at these, you'll be able to have a gain a clear picture if you're humble enough to receive the whole truth of his word. Here we talk about in this lesson is called Messiah's body acknowledging Babylon is fallen. We talk about a particular leader back four years ago who have characteristics that fall in line with Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, Daniel chapter 7 verse 24 through 6, and Daniel 8 verses 23 through 25. In this first scripture, it says this leader will have a mouth speaking boastfully, right? Extremely boastfully. So we also have here in Daniel chapter 7, 24 through 26, he will harass the kettle shim of the most high. And these are the actual descendants of Israel, okay? The descendants of Africans and African slaves. It says here, and continues to say in the scripture, but the court will sit and he will be stripped of his power, abolished for all times. Now we see actively what the courts are doing as far as one of the candidates candidates that are represented to, that are that is represented here they're working actively to try and strip him of his powers now we don't know if this is going to be fulfilled when it comes to this candidate but we're just stating this falls in line with the attributes of a person who was in biblical prophecies of the latter days that's in a light that's not pleasing to the most high it says here in daniel chapter 8 this leader is a stern-faced king, a master of intrigue. He will destroy powerful and holy people. Now, as we saw four years ago, when all these religious, evangelical, uh, white leaders were upholding and glorifying this particular leader and praying for him and trying to prophesy such things, these people were destroyed. They were considered powerful and holy. After the last election cycle, they were utterly brought down humbly before people's eyes because a lot of people who trust in the Most High God, first and foremost, saw the hypocr hypocrisy in their mannerism. They saw the marrying of these religious people and them glorifying this leader as if they were, uh, this particular leader was the best thing since sliced bread, right? <laughs> as if that leader was a type of Messiah. And so a lot of people um, saw them and their demise occur, okay? It says he will consider himself superior and cause the seat to prosper under his hand. And we went through in that particular lesson how the seat prospered in his hand. Certain hand gestures that were made by this leader uh, will show you how things, the seat was carried out. We go here, if you look at UBP lesson 14, and we show who the, is the whore of Babylon and the beast system in Revelation 16, chapter 17 and 18. And we show you how throughout history, that um, this structure of white supremacy is a part of Asherah and Baal worship all the way up to present day from times of ancient till now. And you'll see these things being fulfilled by the United States of America, okay? We show here 
Besides body, choose God's Israel or man's Israel, right? We had that lesson of recent this year that we went over and we cover how a uh, man tries to uh, tailor agreements or treaties over with the United Nations to find Israel. One is, was called the Camp David Accord in the 1970s and one of more recent, about four years ago, the Abrahamic Accord in um, 2019 or 2020. They're trying to alter the agreement that has nothing to do with the actual descendants of Israel and the actual promise that Adonai has made to the actual descendants. So man is trying to push this. Okay. Now let me share an article with you. Shout out to a friend of mine named Jeff. He had to um, give me this particular article that I had forgot about years ago. And I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to hold it up to the screen and you can go look for it yourself. Okay. So in August of 2019, you'll see where there were some tweets that were sent out regarding uh, Trump. And the in this tweet, there was a gentleman named uh, Wayne Allen Root. And he basically called him the second coming of God. Or also called him basically the chosen one, right? So look up this article. You can find it on CBS News back in August of 20 of 2019 and you can look up an article called the chosen one that was specifically written by this Wayne Allen root. Okay. In this article, he talks about how he says president Trump is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world, not just America. He's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. He's like the king of Israel. They love him like he is the second coming of God. But American Jews don't know him or like him. They don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. Now that's paraphrasing some of the things he said in that article. And that's pretty blasphemous, people. I want y'all to understand, do not get your heart wrapped up in candle dish and these presidential candidates to where your mindset is like that. Because what is said is very blasphemous before the eyes of the Most High God. I want you to also go back and, and look. As we show these particular big dollar, uh, millionaire, billionaire people, in particular, there's a lesson called Messiah's Body. Notice the beast is gaining ground. We talk about the prophecy in Revelation chapter 13, verse 14 through 18. In here we cover where Elon Musk was working to create an AI version of Jesus, our Messiah. So an electronic, artificial, intelligent version of our Messiah. That's blasphemous before the eyes of the Most High, right? You'll see here in a lesson we titled, The Chip is Their Final Effort. And here we talk about Bill Gates spearheading and pushing for a cashless society. They plan to implant people with chips. Okay. So you got a candidate that supports the liberal side and one that supports the conservative side and both have demonic goals on the forefront of their mind. So be aware of where God is when it comes to things like this and elections. Okay. There are people who are in the background who are workers of iniquity and they will continuously work to that objective because in their mindset, they think their little G is going to win. Understand where we are in prophetic history when it comes to America. When you look back at lesson UBP, lesson two, where we talk about fire to burn the trees and grass. And it covers the prophecy in Revelation chapter 8, verse 5 through 7. Now, this talk about how fires are started by lightning and the earthquakes and fires mixed with blood. Okay, now 
This does not eliminate the possibility of nuclear warfare, okay? But we're just talking about specifically how this scripture read, this prophetic scripture, and it's occurring now. When it says fire is mixed with blood, the blood is uh, the blood that is shed of the innocent, not just abortion. Understand in this present day and time, we have people who are being lynched and killed, black and brown descendants of Africans and African slaves to this day, as if they were being lynched in times of old. And no matter which group is in power, this is occurring in secret and being buried and smothered. And most of these smaller towns and even some of the bigger ones are trying to um, disregard it and imply that these are suicide. But it's taking black and brown descendants of Israel who are actually going out there, working hard and putting the information out there that reveals that uh, something more sinister has happened. And our most high God is judging that throughout America. Okay. And here's another lesson. UBP lesson four, part one and two talks about the rivers, springs, and the sea turning red as blood from Revelation chapter eight, verse eight through 11. All of these things have happened. The only part of the scripture that has not been fulfilled is a meteor hitting the earth. And NASA knows this is going to happen. So they're always trying to work against, um, trying to develop type of technology that would try and, um, I guess, alter the trajectory of a meteor, meteor if it's heading for earth or to blow it out of the sky, what have you. So these things are happening to America. And I want you to know, body of Messiah, that we have to keep a laser focus. Do not get distracted by all of these things or caught up in your feeling about things like elections. Because we have to understand where God stands. Number one, in our hearts and in our soul and our spirit. Because he's the one who's going to carry us through. We have to endure to the end. And the only way we can do that is to not be distracted by things such as elections. Okay? Know who your God is. When we talk about the pride of certain leaders, my friend Jeff reminded me of a scripture in Acts chapter 12, um, verses, I think, 21 through 24, basically where King Herod was immediately judged because he was so arrogant and boastful because people were glorifying him as if he was God. He met his immediate demise. So no matter what team you're rooting for, you better make sure that whoever you're rooting for has a humble spirit before the most high because he's the ruler of all. Well, body and Messiah, this is the end of this particular lesson. We're going to go back to lawless fallen angels. Thank you so much for joining us. And as we always say to you, may Adonai Elohim cover and surround you and your family, shield and protect you all, and envelop you all with his shalom peace. Goodbye.